experiment upon the worm. We're in the book of a worm. With Charlie and Abby and, and friends. friends. Look, Abby, there's something by the door. Oh, wow, it looks like the Liahona. Really? Let's go show Mom. Here, Mom, look at what we found. Thanks, come on in. Charlie, I am so happy that you're feeling better. Now, let's start today off by reading the scripture that's inside the Liahona. Charlie, do you want to read it for us? Sure, Mom. And I will also be your light in the wilderness, and I will prepare the way before you. If it so be that ye shall keep my commandments, therefore, in so much as ye keep my commandments, ye shall be led towards the promised land, and ye shall know that it is by me that ye are led. Thanks, Charlie. This scripture says that God prepared the way to help Lehi's family get to the promised land if they kept the commandments. How can we liken the scriptures to our life? And where will God guide us? Just like the iron rod helped us get to the tree of life, God will help us as we keep his commandments. Now let's see what's in the bottom of the Liahona. Abby, do you want to open up and see what's inside? It's an arrow in the boat. Oh, that looks fun. Okay, so we have an arrow. Do you see that, Charlie? Yeah. We have an arrow and a boat. So what does a boat and a bow have to do with the Liahona? Or what do they have in common? Do you know? No. Okay, great. Then I'm going to teach you what this week's scripture reading is all about. The Liahona directed Nephi to know where he could use his bow and arrow to find animals to kill for food. And the Liahona directed Nephi to know where to steer the ship through safe waters on the boat that they built. How did Lehi get the Liahona? Do you know? By God. He did get it by God. Good. Actually, in 1 Nephi chapter 6, verse 10, it says, that Lehi found a round ball of curious workmanship. It was made of brass. There were two spindles and one pointed the way that they should go. Kind of like a compass. Do you know what a compass is used for? Yeah. It's Navigation. Used. Yeah. Navigation? What were you gonna say, Abby? Navigation too. Yeah, so navigation means it points us to where, what? To like a place we wanna go. Yes, where we need to go. So I have right here, Two compasses. Can we find, Abby and Charlie, where north is from here? How do you read the compass? It t tells you. It points to it, right? So the compass should point to where north is. Now I know that over here no. by the mountains, you can see out the window, that is north. So let's see if it knows where north is. It's showing it, Mom. Good. So a compass does give us directions. It's kind of like a GPS. It tells us how to get to the store. In 1 Nephi chapter 16, verse 29, it says from time to time that there were words on the Liahona and it changed based on their faith and diligence. And this helped them to understand the things of God. So both the words and the compass worked when the people were faithful and keeping the commandments. The compass or Liahona is like the Holy Ghost. Elder Bednar said that we have been given a spiritual compass that can direct and instruct us during our mortal journey. He said it's the Holy Ghost that helps guide and direct us if we are what? Faithful and keep the commandments. Just like the compass can help you find your way to a store, the Liahona will help us return to Heavenly Father. That's where I wanna go. That's the direction I want to go. What about you, Charlie? Yeah, me too. Me three. Me four. <laughs> yes. Now, how did the Liahona help Nephi use his bow? Do you know how the no. Liahona helped him? No. Maybe where to hunt stuff? Yes, exactly. The Liahona helped them find out where the animals were so that they can find some food. Everybody pretend like you have a bow and arrow and pull it back. Well, guess what happened? One day his bow, what happened? 
Broke. It broke. And do you think his brothers were very happy? No. They were not. They were murmuring. Actually, everybody was complaining, even his father Lehi, because they were so hungry. But do you know what Nephi did instead of complain? He went and fixed the boat. He actually made a new bow. So Nephi went out and got some wood and a stick and he made his own bow. Isn't that pretty amazing? So instead of complaining, he went and did. Just like he went to go help with the plates, right? I will go and do. Now after Lehi made the bow and arrow, he went to his father and asked him where he could find food. Now Lehi felt bad that he murmured and he repented. And then the Leahona worked again and Nephi was able to find food for his family. If you want to learn how to make a bow and arrow like this one with a tree and some sticks from your backyard, let's see if it works. Just hang on, oh, it worked. <laughs> Just hang on till the end of the video and I will show you how. Now the last thing we found in the Leahona was the boat. boat. Now after Lehi found food, he was told by the Lord to go up to the mountain and in Chapter 17, we learn that God told Nephi to build a, boat. a boat. boat. Now, in order to make a boat, Nephi had to learn how to make a boat float. Do you know how to make a boat float? Well, let's experiment upon the words in the Book of Mormon again and see if we can learn why and how boats float. Now, so I picked up these boat kits from the Dollar Tree and so we're going to build those today to see if they will float. Just like the Liahona helped them, the people know which way to go. The instructions in something as simple as making a little boat will help us make a boat, right? If we don't follow the instructions, guess what's going to happen? Probably not going to turn out, right? Okay, so the first thing it says to do is glue the cabin and stern to the hole as shown. our little boats. You guys did a good job. Okay, so we are going to need something to put water in. And of course we need some water. So let's pour some water and hopefully we don't make a mess. We need a lot of water so we can see if things float. Now before we put our boats in the water, let's see what else might float. So do you think this ball will float? Yeah. Both of them? Do. Well, the ping pong ball did, but what happened over here? It sank. It sank. Why do you think it sank? Maybe because, because it has holes. holes. Yes, there's holes in it. So definitely, if something has holes in it, it's not going to float. This one right here is light and no holes, so it was able to float. Now, if you press on this ball, you actually feel a resistance. You feel a little pressure coming up. It's not like it's just air like this. I feel something being pushed up on top of the ball. Do you want to try and feel that, Abby? That is called the buoyancy oh. force or the buoyant force. Let's have Charlie try now. Do you feel that pressure kind of pushing up? Let's see now these two rocks. Do you think they will float or sink? Sink. You think both of them will sink? Let's try this Okay, one. Charlie, put them in carefully. Put them on top of the water and then let go. Oh, they both sank. Why do you think they did? Because they're very heavy. They are too heavy. Well, here's a question though. This rock's not that big. How does a big boat float, but the rock doesn't float? Is that a pretty good question? How does a big cruise ship that's super heavy, how does that float on the water? If this because rock couldn't even float. there's nothing inside the thing. Inside the hull of the boat? Of the, like under okay these are good questions we're going to keep asking so what about this stick or a leaf yeah. do you think they'll float yeah okay. all right charlie put that on top and let's see what floats the stick floats they both floated good job oh, it's they like a little sink. boat yeah it's like a little boat if it's sitting yeah. on top it can float but if you push it all the way under the water goes over top and will push it down do you know why that happens because gravity, gravity, it's constantly pulling down all of us. Yeah. 
We are standing on the earth because of gravity. Otherwise, we'd be floating in space. Mom, look, my finger's going on a cruise. <laughs> <laughs> See if the bark will float. It floats. It floats, it floats. too. Mm -hmm. Even though it's much bigger than the rock, it's also a lot less heavier. And so it's distributed its weight throughout, kind of like a cruise ship does. Now let's take the boat we found in the Liahona and see if it floats. Kinda. It did seep in, there's some windows on the side, so it did kind of, but it's still kind of floating. So when something goes in the water, it needs to be able to, the bottom needs to be able to push up. So gravity is a force that pulls everything to the earth and it keeps it on the ground. But when you put something in water, gravity will push it down, but there is a buoyant force that pushes something up when it goes into the water. If the weight that enters the water is less than the force pushing up, then it floats. The buoyant force balances the force of gravity. When it sinks, gravity wins, just like the rock that went right to the bottom. Now let's see if your boats will float. Put them in there very carefully. Well, kinda. Kind of does, right? Wow. Yeah, I think it's because the sails are not very straight, so they're pushing. Good job. Now let's liken the scripture to our day and see how Nephi was able to get to the promised land and how we can get to our own promised land. Now let's pretend that this boat represents you and me. When we are in the water, gravity is doing what? It's pushing down on us. Let's say gravity is like the commandments, always constant and never changing. Sometimes it can feel like commandments are hard to follow. They're too restrictive, it might push us down. But because the commandments come from God, he is the one on the other side, helping us, holding us up like the buoyant force. Heavenly Father Jesus and the Holy Ghost are helping us. They're always bowing us up so that we can stay afloat, so that we don't sink. We can reach the promised land and return to live with God as we keep his commandments and have God's help. We can trust that he will carry us through the troubled waters and help us to return back to him. Now, what would happen if we decided to not keep the commandments and we started to break the commandments? What do you think would happen? It will follow us. Yeah, we would sink because we need the gravity and God's help. And if we're not keeping those commandments, then we're kind of off balance and we what? We sink. After Nephi and his family built the boat and started their journey to the promised land, Laman and Lemuel were not keeping God's commandments. And when Nephi tried to tell them to repent, what did they do? They murmured. They murmured and then they tied him up. So let's tie you up, Abby. Both your hands. Give me your hands. So they tied up Nephi and they tied him to the boat. And what do you think happened to the Liahona? It didn't work. It didn't work because they were not keeping God's commandments. So hold your hands here. So what happened to the boat? Okay, Charlie, you're going to take this and we're going to be like the tempest and the storm. So you're going to blow inside here and try to blow the boat over. Ready? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so finally, after four days, Laman and Lemuel repented and took Nephi out of his bind and took him and took the cords off. And Nephi prayed and asked Heavenly Father to help them. And guess what happened to the storm? What? The storm stopped and Nephi was able to guide the ship to the promised land because they repented and were keeping the commandments. We can be like Nephi and keep the commandments and then we can receive God's help. Now, it's not always easy. Nephi definitely didn't have it easy. He was beaten, tied up, hurt many times. His brothers wanted to kill him, but guess what? Nephi always trusted in Heavenly Father and always God would come to his rescue. Just sometimes he did have to suffer through some pretty tough things. Jesus Christ will buoy us up. He will help us find our way back to our heavenly home. Boys and girls, I know that this scripture that we read today in the Liahona is true. I know that as we keep the commandments, God will help us. It says he will be our light in the wilderness. He will prepare the way for us if we keep his commandments. And do you know what? The reason why he led them with the Liahona and guided them so much and was their light at night, it's so that they would know that when they got to the promised land, why did they get there? 
It says right here, they will know that it's by me they are led. So we get to trust in Heavenly Father as we come to earth and learn about Him and the commandments. Boys and girls, I know that the Book of Mormon is true. I know that this is the Word of God, that it testifies of Jesus Christ. I know Nephi learned how to listen to the Lord. And you, Abby, and you, Charlie, and you friends at home, I know that you can follow just like Nephi did. And you can go and return back to our Heavenly Father and reach the promised land. Now, before you go, don't forget, we're in a new month. So download, if you're a member of our scripture club, download this month's reading chart so that you can follow along and mark the days that you're reading. And then don't forget to write this week's scripture on your gold plates. Thank you for joining us as we experimented upon the words found in the Book of Mormon. Until next time, remember, Jesus loves you. Bye, Bye, my friends. Now, let me show you how you can make your very own bow and arrow. Now, we just went outside and looked at the sticks we had from our lemon tree, and we found the stick right here. So let's go ahead and take this off so I could show you how to put it together. So the first thing you're going to do is have a straight stick. And you're going to take your knee, so let's put our knee here, and you're gonna take it and bend the stick like this all the way around. And also, if you have any pokies, make sure you take them out, take them off. So you're gonna go like that so it bends it down. Now the next thing you're going to need is some string, and let's take our knot out. And this is called a clover hitch knot. Okay, we're gonna take our loop and turn it this way and make another loop, and then we're gonna put the right one over the left one, Then we're going to run our stick through the center, like this. And then we're just going to pull, just like that. And then we're gonna take the other side, and we have to bend it. So we're going to want to go to about there. So I'm gonna take this off, so we're gonna make a loop like this, and then another loop like this, so it turns, and we're gonna stack one on top of the other. And then we're going to stick this through the other side. So we need to bend it, stick it through the top, and then we're gonna grab a hold at the end and we're gonna pull it like that. So now when we pull back, we have our bow and it works really well. And then I just grabbed another stick and cut it in half. You'll probably want to find something a little longer. We did not have a lot of th sticks out there that weren't wet. And then we're just going to go like this, make a fist with our hand here, and then pull it back. And now don't hold this whole thing because it's not that great of a bow and arrow, but just hold the wood. So you're going to hold the wood here, pull it back, and aim. And it worked. Now we also made one out of a PVC pipe, so you can watch that video as well. But, but this is a fun and easy way to make your own bow and arrow. Before you go, support our channel by joining our scripture club and get fun printables. Have you subscribed to our channel yet? If not, click subscribe below and hit the bell to be notified when we post our next video. If you like this video, please share it with a friend. See us soon. Bye, my friends.